case of emergency, we have life jackets for adults and life jackets for children weighing less than 90 pounds. These life jackets are conveniently located on all three decks in clearly marked locations. They also can be found under the bench seats forward on the first and second deck. On the third deck, life jackets are located in the round stack behind the wheelhouse. All locations are clearly marked. To use a life jacket, first pull the jacket over your head and then bring the strap around your waist and fasten it much like the seat belt in your car. Tie the chest strap together just under your chin. In any emergency, always follow the instructions of the crew. Accessible restrooms are located forward on the second deck and to the rear on the lower deck. For your convenience, the snack bar is located forward on the second deck. There are no accessible handicapped restrooms at the fort, so we encourage our visitors to use the restrooms before they depart the boat. If your photo was taken prior to boarding, your pictures will be available for viewing on the lower deck snack bar at any time during your trip. We encourage you to stop by and take a look. There is an elevator located at midship on the starboard side. It offers access to all three decks of the vessel. Please feel free to use it, but we ask that you restrain children from playing with the elevator. To protect the harbor and prevent pollution, please use the trash containers provided. Throwing trash over is a violation of federal law. While underway, we will point out and briefly explain many of the sites of interest that will be visited. References to the right or left will be relative to the direction the vessel is heading. The National Park Service and the Fort Sumter Tours are committed to the preservation and conservation of Fort Sumter National Monument and the surrounding environment. We're particularly concerned to protect the sensitive ecosystem of the Charleston Harbor and to prevent its pollution. Therefore, we ask you to please use the trash containers provided on the first and second decks. Remember that throwing any trash overboard is a violation of federal law. For your convenience, we've also provided blue recycling containers on each deck. Please use these for all your aluminum cans and plastic bottles. Help us reduce waste and protect our environment by recycling. For the convenience of all our guests, smoking is prohibited aboard all Fort Sumter tour vessels. The old city of Charleston is located on a peninsula, bounded on the east by the Cooper River and on the west by the Ashley River. We're now in the Cooper River headed east towards Fort Sumter and the Atlantic Ocean. The English named the two rivers in honor of one man, Lord Anthony Ashley Cooper, the Earl of Shaftesbury and an English Lord Proprietor of the Carolinas. In April 1670, after a difficult seven-month voyage, a small ship named Carolina, with 93 English settlers aboard, sailed past the lower Charleston Peninsula before landing upstream on the Ashley River to settle the province of Carolina. The original site was called Albemarle Point, but the settlers at Albemarle could not defend themselves from their enemies, which included the Spanish, the French, and Native Americans. Their search for more defensible terrain led them to the peninsula in 1680. Just over a hundred years later, in 1783, the city of Charleston was incorporated.
harbors and in our landfills. We do sell reusable water bottles here on the boat and out at the port. There's also a drinking fountain and water bottle filling station on the lowest level of the boat and out at the port as well. So please be sure you are staying hydrated. And with that in mind, let's jump back into history. We have to go all the way back to the War of 1812. During that war, the United States and Great Britain were at it again. And in response to things the United States did to Toronto, Great Britain sent a fleet of ships to Chesapeake Bay, where they sailed right up to Washington, D.C., and soldiers then burned down the White House. They set fire to the Capitol building, and they burned many other buildings as well. Americans at that time had a wide range of emotions. Imagine how you feel today if a foreign power came over and destroyed one of our cities. Well, President Madison recognized this lack of coastal defenses, so he sent some men up and down the eastern seacoast where they picked out locations for 49 brand new forts, one of which is Fort Sumter out there. But at that time, Charleston already had three fortifications in the harbor. The first one is coming up here on your left, and that is Castle Pinckney. Castle Pinckney sits on Chutes, Folly Island, and it served as the last line of defense before the city of Charleston. The second one, if you go look to your right and forward, you can see that tree line in the distance. That's James Island. And on James Island was Fort Johnson. Now I say was Fort Johnson because Fort Johnson was an earthen fortification and it has since eroded away. So there's not a there to visit now. There are, however, markers there to let you know where it was. I'll point out its rough location once we get closer. And that third fortification is back on your left. Off in the distance you can see that lighthouse. A bit to the right of that, closer to Fort Sumter, is Fort Moultrie. You'll have a great view of this fort from Fort Sumter. Now, Fort Moultrie has a very impressive history. It's the site of the first major Patriot victory in the Revolutionary War, and it was used all the way through World War II, providing 171 years of coastal defense. So, now one would think that if you have three different forts spread out around the harbor, that Charleston was pretty well protected. But there was just one small problem. You see the effective range of most cannons at that time? 